Hey guys, we're back. Hey, hope everyone's been staying safe as well as anyone can during these times. Yeah, I hope you're all social distancing. Yeah, I know I am. Uh, kind of stuck at home and I know Matt you are too so kind of takes uh, something like this to get us back on the horse as we were I've missed it yeah Kurt me too so we're back and we're gonna get back to reviewing comics Brian K. Vaughn begins his latest epic saga the story opens on Cleve a backwater planet with Alana and Marco Alana with her wings hails from Landfall, while Marco with his horns is from Wreath. These two powers have been at war, which has engulfed the entire galaxy. Marco was captured by the Landfall forces and thrown into jail. There, Alana was tasked with guarding the captured Wreath soldiers. During this time, they both read a D. Oswald heist book and fell in love. The new couple have now sworn off both violence and their respective sides. Furthermore, Alana is now pregnant. Because they're from two rival factions, their baby is immediately a high-value target to both sides for its propaganda value. This is the story of Hazel. Next, we meet some freelancers. First is Prince Robot IV. This next-in-line royal returned from a mission where his forces took heavy casualties. Despite this, Landfall Intelligence has tasked him with finding Alina and her child. Ergo, the prince uses his exceptional intelligence to track them down. Next up is the Will and Lion Cat. This snazzy pair are asked by Wreath to find Marco and his wife. We also find out that Will's ex-girlfriend, the Stock, is also on the case. This causes the Will to immediately decide to give up and go to Sextillion. While there, he's presented with an offer to have sex with a child. However, he instead kills the man offering the girl. The stock is the first to track Alana and Marco down. She wounds Marco and is about to take care of Hazel, but is interrupted by Isabel and her ghost friends. After fleeing, she's on a call with the Will, but is killed by Prince Lorat and his forces. Back with Hazel, we see Isabel. The ghost provides Alana with useful advice and even offers to help Marco recover by leading them to snow. However, her one condition is that she can bond and become permanently linked with Hazel. Alana eventually agrees and Hazel gets a new babysitter. She leads him to snow and Marco is revived. The group then makes it to the rocket ship forest and sets off in the space on their next adventure. However, the ship alerts them to incoming magic. Marco realizes that the sword he's using earlier signaled a call to help from his parents. Alright, so let's start off and just talk about that burst scene. Pretty epic beginning. Yeah, and it was uh, pretty cool how both sides ended up just shooting at Alana and Marco pretty much right after Hazel was born. Uh, yeah, uh, so both sides had to shoot at them. Kind of bullshit that they don't really hit them at all, but, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is incredibly lucky that they don't get hit at all. Yeah. Uh, By either uh, side. <laughs> well, then again, not you know. That, not only do they not get hit, Basically, every, everybody else dies. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it would be, uh, be a bold move to kill off, presumably, the protagonist a few pages in. That's true. There would be a story then. I think the thing that the birth really establishes is kind of the tone from what we expect this series to be and gives it like a, this gigantic scope, right? Because it seems to be that it's all going to be about Hazel's life and journey right it, yeah she's like the chosen one essentially <laughs> but it, it definitely is in the midst of everything else that's going on it's a family story at its core and i think the opening really does a great job of establishing that agreed so there's this war going on and it's between uh the main forces of reef and landfall and they're actually uh a planet and its moon that uh, orbits it and they've enveloped the entire galaxy in their war. Like it has to be like either they're paying everyone or they basically conquer them and are like, hey, you're now fighting for our side. <laughs> and it just seems very implausible to me that one planet and its moon has the scale to do that. But well, yeah, we'll see. Completely agree. 
So Vaughn also introduced us to some freelancers. And uh, the first one I want to talk about is Prince Robot, uh, the fourth. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I love that character design. I also love just his name. Like everything about it, I really liked. I kind of like the fact that uh, he's like, essentially he's super traumatized. Yeah, there's something that happened in the past, and I'm not sure what yet. And uh, he's, uh, it's interesting that you see like the, like the hints of what's going on in his head when it just flashes across the screen. I think that's just like a great, great way to represent his thoughts. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, we also get the impression that uh, the king doesn't like him very much or is disappointed in him. And he also apparently has PTSD from some planning he was on called Threshold Nun, where a bunch of his uh, brave soldiers got killed. Yeah, it uh, seems like they barely survived. Um, so why would that make your dad, his dad hate him? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like, <laughs> it reminds me of like Avatar The Last Airbender, where, you know, Iroh, he goes out to war. Uh, he doesn't conquer Ba Sing Se. Fire Nation, the Fire King, really is disappointed in him. Has another favorite son. I also found it interesting when he was talking to his wife, and they're talking about the landfall soldiers. Uh, he's calling them allies, but she kept calling them customers, highest bidders in the war. So I found that kind of interesting. From her perspective, she just views landfall uh, as a source of income, whereas he views them as actual allies. Yeah, I think that could be part of the trauma that he's had or just having thought with him so long. I'm sure there's some level of camaraderie that develops with anyone that yeah. goes through any experience. Completely agree. Um, how about also we talk about the Will? Yeah, I mean, the Will seems like an interesting guy. I like his lying cat a lot. And he does have like an interesting... Yeah, the lying cat is one of the most interesting characters. Because it, can it always tell if you're lying or like... What if you're a really good liar? Can it not tell? Or does it always know? I mean, if you earn the name Lion Cat, I kind of hope that that's what it implies. I don't know. Like, maybe we'll meet someone eventually that has the capabilities to trick the Lion Cat in some way. So if, if they do meet that person, that person is probably going to become my favorite character. But <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think... The Will's got a very interesting character design, and his whole thing on Sextillion definitely sets his character up in a lot of different ways. Oh, all right. So first time going to Sextillion is just hilarious. Because <laughs> apparently he found out that he goes, oh, stock is also on this? From my perspective, I can't win. I'm just going to go spend all the money as quickly as possible. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a veteran move. He's probably been in this situation before. <laughs> That's and he's a veteran been, like, move? Yeah, it's a veteran move because you you kind of know what your uh, you know where your limitations are. You know when you're going to lose, so may as well make the most of it. <laughs> uh, next, we should talk about Cleave, which is the world that Hazel's born on. Having a rocket ship forced is insane. Yeah, it, it definitely is very whimsical and. Half the time you're reading these first six issues, you're just like, oh, this is just going to lead to nowhere and it's going to be kind of Complete like... Complete bullshit. A, yeah, exactly. But uh, speaking of the rocket ship force, like, I actually really like that they made the ship organic. I think that's kind of unique. And... And it's actually a rocket ship. Yeah. <laughs> they can actually fly away in it. <laughs> but I like that Which they... It's insane. Yeah, they hint that it's... It has a mind of its own, and I think that could lead to some interesting storylines soon, and uh, <laughs> I want to see where that goes. The other ridiculous thing about Cleve, at least from my what I thought, was that everyone that dies there becomes a ghost. Like, evolutionarily, why is that a thing? And how does that impact their culture? Like, if there's just dead people around all the time, do they see death differently? I thought the people have to uh, die in like a really traumatic way, I think. All right. Like being killed by, I don't know, something as a little kid. Oh, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> Why is that a thing? 
Yeah, and you can only see them at night too, right? Or can you see them all the time? No, it's only at night. So they actually picked up one of the ghosts, Isabel, and she becomes like the nanny. And yeah. Kind of like vampire rules. She like has to be invited in to become like soul bonded. Like she can't just soul bond anyone. I think one of the things that Saga does really well is the uniqueness of their character designs. Completely agree with that. I think uh, Fiona Staples is like one of the best artists out there. Yeah, they're really using the medium well by really going out there. They don't have to be entirely humanoid. These creatures can be literally anything. Prince Robot, I think that's like a really cool way to represent the character. I think the stocks entrance was a great way to set the scene for what this character is about. And her character design, (laughs) I think it just says a lot about the associations we have with certain character types. Like you're instantly this like very dangerous arachnid looking woman. (laughs) Like you just know that this one is dangerous and someone that is not to be messed with from many many reasons so what's your favorite moment i think what i liked the most was the beginning of issue five and that's where prince robot is just sitting in that prison bathroom (laughs) (laughs) he finds out that his partner is expecting and then the scene cuts to marco just going ham and just like destroying this envoy of landfall uh, soldiers. <laughs> and I just really like that entire scene just because there's some really great dichotomies there. And when Marco really starts going at it, like the background color changes, you really see that he is a badass. Bright red. What about you? What did you like? So my favorite scene is where the will meets a giant monster who breathes fire on him. And his idea is to grab his gunpowder and throw it in, its, in the beast's mouth and completely <laughs> destroying it, which I just find hilarious. It really sets the tone for his, his character. <laughs> it's, it's a good opening. Yeah, definitely. So who's your favorite character? Well, actually, I mean, you don't really get to see much of it, but... My favorite character is from that scene you just described, and I really like Lion Cat. <laughs> Lion Cat? Yeah, I, I'm i really intrigued about what Lion Cat's deal is, and I'm instantly a fan. Uh, I would have to go with Prince Robot, uh, the fourth. I really like the fact that he's just, you know, a prince being awesome. Prince being a prince. Always fan of that royalty. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Yeah, um, actually, we wanted to ask the viewers, uh, what is your favorite moment from these first six issues? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of overlap, but we're really curious to know what everyone else liked. I completely agree. You know what? It's been great just doing this again. It's been a while since we've done it. We're a bit rusty, and (laughs) it's goddamn... Uh, crazy that it took a pandemic for us to do it again, but here we are. Also be sure to check out this channel again for the next review of the next volume of Saga. See ya. Bye.